bring them in early when you're going to pay two guys to do the same job. Call to order the school committee meeting of February 15th, 2023. We're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. So this meeting is being recorded this evening, and we would like to know if anybody else is recording it. Thank you. I'm going to ask for a moment of silence that will be observed for those who serve in the military and for others who help protect us. Thank you. I'll ask for a uh, roll call attendance, please. Mayor View. Mr. Wagner. Here. Mr. Barcelo. Mr. Doubt. Here. Mrs. Perrette. Present. Mrs. Schofield. Here. Mr. Shumsky. Here. Mr. Lamoth. Here. Mr. Gerard. Present. Mr. Gerard is participating via Zoom. Mr. Bernard. Here. Mrs. Lopes. Present. Mr. Zitella. Yes. 10 present, two absent. So now is the time that I would ask for public announcements by committee members. Mrs. Perrette, please. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, just to let the viewing public know that I received notification that on the 23rd of February at 6.30, the City Council Finance Subcommittee will be meeting in the Council Chambers to discuss 350 Memorial Drive. And as vacation is on the horizon, wishing everyone a, a lovely week off. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, okay, all set. Thank you, uh, Mr. Doubt. Uh, I would just also like to wish all of our hardworking teachers, staff, and everybody in our schools a uh, well-rested vacation. I hope you're able to enjoy your time and recharge. Uh, and also would just like to say I was able to attend the groundbreaking ceremony this past weekend. Um, it was my first real event that I was able to get to, and I was really um, impressed by just the amount of people that were there. And I think that the um, that the the dog park and the veterans park that is going to open up on Westover Road. I think it's going to be a phenomenal thing for our community and for Ward 1. And I'm very much and was glad to be a part of it and looking forward to seeing that project come to fruition. Thank you. Mr. Bernard? All set, thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Lamoth? All set. Mrs. Hi, All Grace. Set. Yes, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize our three school resource officers, Officer Hammond, Officer Montanez, and Officer Zura for all that you do for our schools. Today is National School Resource um, Day, and I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you guys do. Thank you. And Mr. Satella? All set. Okay, Mr. Morton, uh, Superintendent Morton. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to, uh, I got really one announcement. I had the pleasure today to go around and congratulate um, the Pioneer Valley Excellence, Excellence in Teaching Award winners for the 2022-23 school year. And I just wanted to read a blurb that we had put on our social media. We are pleased to announce our 2022-23 Pioneer Valley Excellence in Teaching Award winners. Our seven winners met various criteria, including professionalism, excellence, and teaching practices, community outreach related to education and enthusiasm for the teaching prof profession. These awards are sponsored by the Harold Grinspoon Charitable Foundation, Irene E. and George A. Davis Foundation. The Chickpea Public Schools would like to thank all of the award winners for what they do on a daily basis for their students and their families. A sincere congratulations to all the award winners. And the award winners were Aaron Whalen Berry Elementary School, Heather Polly Bow School, Melissa McDonald Chickpea High School, uh, Christine Pecos, Fairview Veterans Memorial Elementary School, Donna Conroy, Lambert Lavoy, Richard Bernard, Litman Elementary School, and Mary Burke, Stefanik Elementary School. Thank you again, and congratulations to all the award winners for the 2022-23 school year. Thank you, and I wish you all a healthy, relaxing, refreshing, and rejuvenating vacation that's coming up, too. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, open pit input, um, public open pit input, please. We have um, Lisa Benavenu, please, signed up. Uh, Lisa Bienvenu, 34 Everett Street. Uh, congratulations to all the teachers who won awards. That's excellent. Um, this evening, I want to say something about the CTE program. I was here for the presentations that were done by Chigabee High and Chigabee Comp. They were both excellent presentations, but I was really struck by the demographics, by the disparity um, in the de demographics between Chigabee High and Chigabee Comp. And I was just thinking about the districting in the city, and it really struck me uh, about comp, um, the, the lower percentage of high needs, the lower percentage of low income. And um, it kind of just stuck with me. And interestingly enough, I get a lot of publications for work, and one thing I get is from the Associated Subcontractors of Massachusetts. And there was a link to an article about a lawsuit that's been filed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, saying that this is with the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights, saying that vocational schools uh, disproportionately and unjustifiably exclude students from vulnerable populations who are protected from discrimination under federal law. And there's other things about that. This was just filed at the end of January um, at, at the, or the beginning of February. I think it was the end of January, though. And it struck me that this lawsuit was filed because that's what struck me about the numbers that I saw in the demographics of CTE. And I just, you know, they were talking about um, the admissions programs into that and how the applicants are screened. And I think it's worth the city looking at this lawsuit that's occurring in the Commonwealth. And it seems like now is a good time to think about how are children getting accepted into the program. And when I read through the article on this lawsuit, it did talk about that um, you can't just go by who the applicants are, are children who, who are not represented as well, are they even encouraged to apply for these programs? Um, so that's just something I, I wanted to toss out there. It seems like now is a good time. There are going to be changes in the school district to reassess what's happening. And in light of the, the lawsuit in the Commonwealth, it's worth just looking at what we do here in Chicopee to make sure, um, you know, that we're doing everything that we can to help the students, you know, that we take a step back and look at it in light of what's going on. So thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Spin Avenue. Um, just really quickly, a couple quick things. I hope I'm not out of order. Um, I apologize for skipping over Mr. Gerard for public input. Are you all set, Mr. Gerard? Yes, Ms. Lopes, I am all set. Okay, thanks. And Mayor View is going to be taking over any minute. He was just at a prior engagement in Holyoke. He's bragging about how great our city is, but again, he should be here any moment. And we next welcome our visitors, our State of the Schools presentation. We have Samuel Carlin, who's the principal of Belcher School this evening. We have Michelle Pete, who is principal of Fairview Veterans Memorial Elementary School, and Janet Reed, principal of Satella Early Childhood School. So we welcome you to the podium, please. Thank you for having me. I'll bring the clicker to you, Mr. Carl. So there are two podiums? <laughs> So I'm going to start 
Belcher School is a small elementary school, PK to grades two. And you can see our demographics up on the screen. The breakdown of our student population, primarily Hispanic population, 46%. White population, 37%, with a few other minorities represented. Our largest subgroup are our low-income population, 78.1. Or actually, if you put high needs together, also 81.3. Students with disabilities, 12.1. I'm going to spend the majority of the presentation talking about our three Belcher initiatives, some of which I'm sure you're very familiar with because they are district-wide. By far, our largest concentration this year has been the implementation of a new English language arts program, Amplify CKLA. We've also taken time to redesign and implement a multi-tiered behavior support program at Belcher School to help out with our school environment. And then for the first time, our school is now implementing an integrated full day PK program for students ages three and four. I'm very pleased to report that the Amplify CKLA program has already showed significant growth in kindergarten and first grade if you specifically compare our Acadian slash Dibbles scores. So we're very pleased with the growth in that area. We're still not seeing the growth we would want to see in second grade, but I think as everyone here knows, as students get older, it's harder to see direct change. So last year, you may remember, even at the school committee level, there was talk with regards to um, a lot of staff members in the city of Chicopee experiencing students who were aggressive or students who were not following behavioral expectations. And this was also brought by our principal advisor committee, our PAC team, to my attention. So we really took a long time to decide how, at our level, are we going to address this need that appears to be district-wide. So we really took a look and thought hard that in order to make a change, we really needed to make a change to our school environment. So we designed a three-tier model with staff input, starting at the whole school level with our Belcher Beaver Buck program. Children are able to earn rewards for demonstrating expected behaviors. Those expected behaviors are very clearly defined. And then at the end of the week, those kids can, the kids that have earned their beaver bucks can trade them in either for very tangible, squishy items, things that they enjoy, or less tangible items such as time with their favored staff members. You can see some of the pictures up here. The little girl at the top left corner, she really wanted to work with Mr. Anderson, our PE teacher. She wanted to paint his nails. <laughs> He indulged her, which was great, and made her day. Um, sometimes the preferred adult is our vice principal, Mrs. Paquette, or myself, and the kids really want to spend time with those adults in the school that they enjoy spending time with, so it's very motivating for them. Classroom teachers tie in their, their classroom behavior support programs with the Beaver Bucks, and that works out quite well. And then we have our third tier which is a very lengthy, individualized process that's not new to the city of Chicopee, but our instructional support team process, very clearly identifying behaviors and then designing a behavior improvement plan, a BIP, to work to eliminate those behaviors. Lastly, to mention, we have implemented a preschool program. We have two preschool classes at Belcher School. We have taken away obstacles that get in the way of residents utilizing our programs. These programs are free to the, our, the families that are enrolled in our programs. They're in our neighborhood school, eliminating the need for transportation further away. And then also, 
our program is a full day program better aligning with the needs of working parents. So we have 34 students currently enrolled in the program and we're really seeing a lot of success. Those kids in that program, when they continue on, we're their neighborhood school. They'll be familiar with our school and that will help the transition into kindergarten and the older grades. Thank you. Thank you all. I, I would really, excuse me, sorry. Um, I'd like to um, wish everyone a good evening. Mayor View, who was supposed to be, he should be here, I think, right? Um, our interim superintendent, um, Mr. Morton, school committee members, uh, attorney Bouchard and assistant superintendent Francis, and um, my wonderful staff that came to support, one of which is Chris Picos, who was one of the recipients of our Grinspoon today, so. So thank you all for having me tonight. Um, this is my first state of the school as we didn't have them last year and this is only my second year at Fairview. So I feel so blessed, I wanna say first, for um, being able to lead the staff at Fairview. We have a wonderful staff. Um, that are committed to our students and I'm sorry, I think I'm too short. And um, helping me lead the way is uh, Melissa Sullivan, my vice principal. So I want to recognize her too. So as we look at who we are as a building, um, you can see that we have a pretty large population. That bottom number should say 407, and I'll explain that. So according to our October Sims, we were at 369 children at Fairview. We are a pretty transient school, so currently um, we're at about 381. The 26 additional that I've added are our students that are in our Crossroads program, which is our 18 to 22 transition program. So in total, we have about 407 students at Fairview. So if we're looking at race and ethnicity, um, you can see that we're at about 10.1% African Americans. We have a small population of Asian. We have a 50.4% population of Hispanic and a white population of 34.1%, and then a small population of um, multi-race or non-Hispanic. I do wanna mention that our school has changed over the last few years. If you look at the demographics from 2021, um, we had an African-American population of 5.1%, and that's doubled um, at this point. So just really interesting information to see how our student population has changed. Also, um, if we talk at the next slide, we're gonna talk about uh, students with disabilities. I'm gonna make a note on that as well. <clears throat> so you can see first, uh, language not English, the percentage of students is 10.8, and our English language learners, or ELs, is 8.7, a little bit higher than the district. Our low income is 82.7%. And our students with disabilities, according to our October Sims, is 23.6. Again, what I wanna make note of is that we include the Crossroads program as part of our school, as our kids. So when you add those 26 kids in, with many of them, or most of them are on IEPs, that brings our students with disabilities population up to about 28.6%. And I think that's important to note because we involve our Crossroads program in every aspect of our school day. Also, our high needs population currently is 88.1%, and that has increased by about 10% since 2021. So here are some of our babies. Um, 
couple of initiatives that I'm going to talk about today is the um, addition of our preschool program at Fairview. We have two new preschool classes. Um, and you can commonly find myself or my vice principal and a lot of times our counselors down in, in those classrooms because they are just hunk of chunk of burning loves. Um, if you look up in the left hand corner there, you'll see um, the picture where I'm reading and that is one of Miss Picos's three year old preschool students. Um, and I was reading to the, to the whole grade at Christmas time, I was reading um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas and she just made her way up onto the chair with me and just began reading her own book. Um, we call her Boss Baby. But um, you can also see Mr. Uh, Turgeon, our science teacher, who is right in our school garden, and those little ones are just so involved. Um, you can also see in the third picture one of our little buddies with our counselor, Miss Engler. Uh, and down below, you can see they did the, on the left hand side, far bottom, um, they did the um, bus safety, just like every other child did. So, um, and then we have our nurse up on the right hand side, but you, you can't see her there. Sorry about that, Nurse Jordan. So we definitely um, have loved having these littles with us. Some of the really important things about having our preschool program is that we involve them in every aspect of the school day. They learn expected behaviors early and they become acclimated to being in an elementary school. And not only an elementary school, but our elementary school. So they know what to expect when they move on to kindergarten. And these are our own kids, so these will be kids that will be in our building next year. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the inclusivity at Fairview. So because we have such a large population of special education students, we feel the need to make sure that they are included in all aspects of our day. Um, so you will see whether they're in pre-K or our 18 to 22 transition program, they're included in everything. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, one of our um, special education students received a Falcon Award. I'll talk about that after. You can see up in the top fourth to the, from the left, uh, Johnny, one of our 18 to 22 students, his goal was to be a greeter at Walmart or another store. And he greeted the children every morning as they came in. And they looked forward to seeing Johnny as they entered Fairview. And it increased his self-esteem and he was ready to go. Um, you can also see um, in the middle there, one of our other 18 to 22 students uh, who is in love with one of our parents. He is just, that's his person. Mm. So we include them in every aspect of our day. So we love having them. Uh, again, that's a kind of comfort zone you'll find myself or Miss Sullivan. We commonly, if we're having a bad day, that's where you're gonna find us, right down there with our littles. This summer, um, during PD, we talked a lot as a school, as a staff, about uh, common language across our building. You will often hear, and it doesn't matter if you're in, in preschool or 18 to 22, you'll hear common language like expected and unexpected behavior. We don't use those words, good behavior or bad, but expected and unexpected. So in other words, what is a typical behavior that you might see in the classroom? And what is something that would be typical to see in the cafeteria? And those can be different from space to space. So again, we use them school-wide. Um, so they learn them early. Our preschoolers, I think our teachers can speak to that, they know expected behaviors. When you use those words, they know what you're talking about. And we have, if you look, I believe, on pages 9 and 10 in your flip book that we passed out, um, you should see displays of some posters that we have across the building. So the expected behaviors in the classroom, 
the poster there would look very different than the expected behavior in our um, gymnasium or in the bus line. And on, I think, page nine, you'll see kind of what our expectations are throughout the building. Why are these important? Well, our kids, as Mr. Uh, Carlin had said, you will see every staff member at Fairview walking around with, we call ours, falcon bucks. And you can see an example of a falcon buck on page two. So all staff member, regardless of their position, custodial staff, kitchen staff, noon attendants, teachers, administration, nurses, everyone has these. And the, all the children know what they are, and they love to get their falcon bucks. So they can get them for showing expected behaviors in our school. As Mr. Carlin said, yes, if you look on, I think it's page, try page three, I think. Um, they can purchase different items, tangible items, but more importantly, they can purchase coupons for experiences, and you'll see those as you look through the book from pages three to eight. Um, so some of our popular ones are assistant too. Uh, we make, make them a badge, they go spend some time with whatever adult that they're um, interested in spending time with, lunch with a favorite adult, um, morning show guest speaker, that's a big hit. I think we are scheduled right through the end of June. They love to come down to my office and do the morning, the morning show with me. Um, so that's a big hit. And so all of these things encourage expected behavior, but more than anything, they build relationships. And that's what we really work hard at doing um, at Fairview. We also brought back uh, all school assemblies this year. One thing that's pretty incredible to see if you ever stop by is we have, like I said, about 407 kiddos and over 100 staff. And another uh, school-wide common uh, quiet down sort of routine that we use is giving the countdown from five. So you might hear, in five, your voices are gonna be off. Four, you're facing Mrs. Pete. In three, hands on your lap. And we can quiet a group of 400 kids in less than five seconds. Why? Because our staff is all following through with that same common language, again, from pre-K right through to 18 to 22. So that's huge. And it also, it also creates um, an atmosphere of they're not my kids, they're our kids. Right? They aren't just Miss Dad Nikki's kids, but they're all of our kids. So you can see some of the pictures up here of some um, experiences that they bought with their Falcon Bucks, uh, from assistance to uh, Sunday with your favorite adult, um, to morning show guest speaker. You can see that little one on my lap. So lots of great experiences, lots of relationship building. Also, um, talking about behaviors, we have created a um, reset room. Both of my counselors, Ms. Engler and Ms. Cavalli, worked on that, where children can go. Um, if you look on page 11 and 12, I think, um, you'll see the reset room. And then what you'll see is what we've required all of our teachers to have in their rooms, a calm down corner, zen zone, whatever they want to call it, where the kids can use this area to self-regulate get themselves back to a ready to learn position, whether they're using calm down tools or strategies, but it's really effective. And on page two, you might have seen, or I'm sorry, page one, our new mascot, Freddy the Falcon. The kids have really bought into him too. He attends most of our all school uh, assemblies and they love to see him come. And just about done. Uh, the climate and culture. We've worked really hard on the climate and culture at Fairview. So if you look on page 15, um, and then 13 and 14 before, uh, we have really tried to recognize our staff. We've done things like the appreciation station, going around from classroom to classroom, bringing teachers some small um, goodie. Uh, we've also done the surprise squad last year, where a group of us, myself, my vice principal, 
counselors, we would go into a classroom and kind of looking at those staff members that might need that break and going in and saying, okay, you've got 30 minutes of free time, go take a minute for yourself and we've taken over the class. So again, giving, providing them with some break, but also providing experiences for us to build relationships with our children. And lastly, we've increased our communication both with my staff and with our families. Um, we use the Remind app, which is a district app, and it's wonderful because it, uh, parents are able to read the Remind app in their own native language, which is huge. I also send out a Thursday Thoughts every week digitally. It's also on our Facebook page and our web page. Um, and my teachers also get a weekly update on, on Saturdays usually. Um, and the last thing is increased family events. We know that the more that parents are involved, the greater the student engagement and the stronger the homeschool connection. So you can browse through later, but you'll see lots of our events in there. Salute to Seuss, Trunk or Treat, Parents Night Out, and they go on. Um, and of course, as Mr. Carlin said, we've adopted CKLA and the trails, the new trails SEL program um, that Mr. Morton put in place. So we are utilizing those two. And with help from the district, we've also provided um, new desks and chairs. They'll be ready by next uh, school year for all grades second through five. So that sums it up for Fairview. I thank you so much for giving me your time. And I think it's, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Reed. Good evening, school committee. Uh, thank you for having us here. And I'm too tall. <laughs> so mine will be much shorter. Um, Okay, this is where we are as a building, and just want to let you know that last week our numbers were at 252. As of yesterday, we were up to 263, so our numbers are growing very rapidly. Uh, we have currently got 36 self-contained autism students, which is very high. We have never had that high of a numbers before. And there's just the breakdowns of our uh, race and ethnicity. I think we're pretty close to what the district is. And this is our additional subgroups. As you can see, 53% of our students have disabilities. Um, and I think that's probably higher as of today. Uh, the high needs are our self-contained students. Uh, we're having a lot of children qualifying. Um, many of the kids are much needier than they used to be. Um, I'm assuming part of it's to do with the pandemic that maybe early intervention weren't able to get into the homes to them. So a lot of them are qualifying that would not have qualified before. So we are also implementing the Trails to Wellness, as with the whole district, and we have used our professional development November 8th and January 13th to work on that. And all the teachers are implementing it. I've been in the classrooms, they're all using the same language, and the kids seem to be very excited about it. We also have done a creation of tier one social emotional supports. Um, we have done, started off with star jars in the classrooms and calming corners in each of the rooms. The star jars are like the bucks that the other schools have, but our kids, as they earn them, they're put in the jar. Is that too loud? <laughs> and then, um, when the jar gets full, the class gets to choose what they want. And so far, some of the celebrations we've had is a Disney day. Everybody dressed as Disney. They watch Disney movies. We've had cookies and milk, snowman day. And as you can see on the one, no, you can't see it yet. Hold on, let me see. 
the star jar, the next one's going to be a talent show and tell. So the teachers talk with the kids about this and they get to vote on what they want to have for their star jars. The calming corners are the same uh, that are used in the other schools and they uh, have been very successful at our level. There's a few children obviously they don't work with but for the majority of the kids they're very helpful and it can get very overwhelming for preschoolers so if they can just go into a calming corner for a few minutes and settle themselves they can get back and be successful. Uh, we have also been uh, trying to improve the morale within the school with the staff as well as the kids. Um, so each month we've been setting aside uh, spirit days and that is for the kids as well as the staff. And actually today we had our 100 days because we started a week after the other schools. Um, a few of the teachers I did not recognize until I actually went up to them. They were so well dressed up. We had walkers, walking sticks, even a wheelchair. And a lot of the kids were dressed up too. Uh, we've had pajama days, bring your teddy bear to school day, trick or treat trail, winter fest, and we had a staff nacho bar day. Um, the school has also done a food drive for Lorraine's Soup Kitchen. And we're currently doing one right now, um, uh, cereal for Lorraine's Soup Kitchen. So people bring in boxes of cereal. Then we line them up as dominoes throughout the school hallways and the kids get to knock them over and see what happens to them. Then they'll be donated to the Soup Kitchen. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of fun things going on at Satella this year. And I think that's everything for me. If the other two would like to come up. So we can go around the room and have questions from school committee members. We'll start with you, Mr. Bernard, please. All set. Okay, thanks, Mr. Doubt. Um, so I just had a question in regards to Zatella. So the, the star jar, um, so that's a, a class reward. Am I understanding that right? So what, I'm just curious, how do you handle if the, let's say the class, I know you said they vote on it, but with it being a class reward incentive and everything, how do you handle it if a student doesn't like the reward that they're getting or, or whatever the reward may be? How, how do you handle that? I never actually have that problem. <laughs> They're pretty easy at preschool as far as what they want. It's more specific that they don't want to do something work-wise, but usually the fun things are all for participating. Okay, thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, the other, only other comment I want to make is just in regards to um, Fairview. I think, I think all of you did a great job, and, and there certainly is great initiatives happening in all of the elementary schools we sat here um, with the elementary state of the schools presentation a, a, a week or two ago, and, and I'm, I'll echo what I said. I'm really excited to see at a young age the, the learning and the engagement that our students have. Um, I just want to give a special shout out to Fairview. You know, I, I know obviously based off of what you presented here, uh, one thing I, I kind of noticed when I was looking at those pictures is you talk about relationships and I just see a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention and you see a student and a teacher in a lot of these pictures and I think that that individualized attention really kind of goes a long way. Uh, again, I think great things are happening in all of our elementary schools, um, but just very impressed by what I see here from Fairview. So thank you very much for all three of you guys, for all of our elementary schools and all of our staff for how hard they work. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. No comments, thank you. Okay, Ms. Perrett. I just thank you for the, the presentation of your, of your schools and all the, the positive um, reinforcement that you're all doing with the children. Um, so uh, hopefully we can kind of bridge the education gap with the COVID that interrupted our usual course of studies with the children. So I wish you all the best and thank you for your presentations. Okay, Mr. Lamath. Yes, I have a few questions. Um, we'll start with preschool. Are we still doing half, or are we just all full days now? 
we have a mix. Can you hear me if I don't speak into that? I can hear you. Okay. We have a mix still. We have more full days at this point than half days. Okay. But some of the kids are just too immature at three to come in for a full day. So you're giving them whatever services they need or? Yes. So you said you had six classrooms with IE, well, autism. autism. You said that's high, which sounds like it's high. Yeah. Um, attributed to just better diagnosed it? Uh, well, I think they're getting diagnosis earlier maybe than what they used to. I really don't know what the cause of it is. Um, they're coming through much more severe than they used to be. And by the end of preschool, do you have a pretty good percentage that come off of IEPs or they just move on to the next grade with their IEPs? There, there's very few come off right at preschool because most of them are only there two and a half years. But <clears throat> we're actually, Neva Frumkin and I have been looking at the numbers. We're trying to see how many are coming off at kindergarten and first grade. Okay. I think it would be good to follow that and see, you know, what it is happening within the district. So, so these, this question would be for the three. Uh, you have any open positions that you haven't been able to fill? Um, I currently have some staff in um, our our self-contained classroom, uh, so we will be looking to fill that position in the fall. All of the Belger positions are filled. I'm looking to fill two paraprofessional positions and one uh, substitute teacher. And it was good to hear that the, the three of you were doing things to try to help the staff morale. I mean. For a while there, I was thinking that we weren't doing anything, but it sounded like we're doing a lot. Thank you. Mrs. Schofield? Uh, I just wanted to thank all three of you for a um, great presentation and all that you're doing um, to, uh, for the children and for the staff. I did have a question for um, Fairview. Um, Mrs. Pete, it's a, um, I, you, had note, you had mentioned that the students with uh, disabilities had increased by like 20%. Do you, do you have any um, you know, reason or speculation as why that might have increased so much? So I, we have a higher population also of substantially separate um, classrooms. So this year we had, in our building currently, we have four intensive um, autism classrooms. We have a K, a K1, a 1, 2, and a 2. And then we also house two intellectually impaired intensive needs classroom, classrooms, excuse me. And we also house the Crossroads program. So there's a lot of substantially separate uh, special ed classrooms in our building. OK, oh, thank you. I, and I did want to note, too, that um, I was fortunate enough to attend the um, evening with Santa and I, I was extremely impressed with well everything but but what struck me um, for, first and foremost was that you had um, uh, the opportunity for th some of those high needs children's to come at a quiet time and I thought that was um, uh, pretty remarkable that you were definitely in tune to the needs of the students and were able to go that extra mile so I thank you all for that too. Thank you. Yeah, we really try to um, make sure that we're giving those kiddos the same thing that we give everyone else. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shumsky? Yes, I first off want to thank all three of you for coming out and all your staff for coming out to show support. Uh, my question is for all three of you, where are some areas of growth that you guys can see in all of your schools? Oh, thanks. I think with the implementation of the Amplify CKLA program, we have really shown a lot of academic growth. I think I'm fortunate that I can see that growth in the kindergarten to first grade, and that's really where you're gonna see that growth first. I think over time, as that program becomes implemented more fully and the kids are in the program more than one year or more than half a year, you're really gonna see that take off. Sam, I think that we can always improve upon things, right? We reflect and look at things we can improve upon. Um, I think after COVID, yeah, we're still trying to increase those academic scores. 
Um, I'm hoping that this new CKLA Amplify uh, will help us with that. We've also increased our PLCs, so our grade level meetings, to talk about things at grade level that might be an issue that we can look to resolve. We also have, as part of our CKLA, it's called a win block, what I need, and we've really looked at that closely and, and configured classrooms where uh, not all of one specific first grade stays in their room during the wind block, but they might go to another first grade classroom because we're trying to um, give them what they need. So trying to make sure if some kids need enrichment, they're getting it, or other kids need reinforcement, they're getting that. So we're trying, um, but that's always an area that I think everyone can improve upon. Well, I, I think at preschool level, we can actually see daily improvements in the kids because they just soak up like sponges. But um, the main thing that I've seen is the self-regulation, I think, with all these things we have put in place and the routines that the kids are really self-regulating and there's less for the teacher to have to tell them how to do certain things they already know, get in line, you don't talk in the hallways, you know, all, all those kind of things. And um, I think that's probably the biggest improvement that I have seen. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Satella? Yes. First of all, thank you for your, your narrative. Into the microphone, please. Um, thank you very much for your narrative. And that's what I want to make comment on. As I listen to your visuals, or your, your narrative, as well as your visuals, I couldn't help but be considerably impressed in how much I fully realize the value and importance of your work. What would the city of, community, city of Chigamy as a community do without public school? What if we didn't have it? So I want to acknowledge that very, very greatly. And you know, what, what, and I, I, you people work hard for your money. Good for you. What single factor motivates you the most individually? So I'm most motivated by the students. I have the honor every day of watching them come off the bus. And you, you do see this more with the younger kids. They're happy and they want to be there. They want to please the adults in front of them. So that's the ingredient we capitalize on. I would agree. Um, every day I look to create an atmosphere at Fairview where kids come to school, they're happy to be there, they feel safe, and they're ready to learn. Um, some of our students, most of our students come from um, lower income areas in the city, and we want to make sure that we can provide them with everything we can so that it can be the best person that they can be. And, and I agree with them. I think the environment has a lot to do with it. I mean, when I think back to when I was in school, you came in and sat at a desk, and you certainly didn't speak unless you were spoken to. These kids feel very safe, very comfortable. Uh, they share information that probably their parents wouldn't want them to be sharing, but sometimes it's helpful for us to get a feel of, you know, what's going on with that child, why they're behaving certain ways. But yeah, I think, um, I think the environment has a lot to do with it in the schools. Oh, and I just want to add that Johnny, that is at Fairview, went to Satella when he was three. <laughs> Again, I want to thank you for what you do, and please don't stop doing it. Okay, and lastly, Mr. Gerard. Thank you, Ms. Lopes. And, uh, you know, just sitting here listening to these three presentations, uh, as well as all the other presentations that have come uh, before us, uh, it's very enlightening to see that, uh, you know, everybody is going to work every day, and, and they're really after making positive changes for our school system and our students. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about behavior in schools, and uh, there's no better way to uh, to teach that <clears throat> than such a, a, at an early age as we're doing in a preschool. So uh, collectively working together, uh, everybody, I want to thank you, uh, the, administra the administrators and the teachers, 
uh, it, it's definitely making a positive impact, and uh, we just need to keep uh, keep keep changing with the times uh, positively moving forward. So great job, everybody, and uh, it's great to see the morale being built up. Thank you. Okay, thank you to our three principals. So we're just gonna ask for a one minute recess while we let our staff go home for the evening because they have to be at work early in the morning. So one minute recess, please. Number 23-2-27, please, out of order. Superintendent. Walking bus, uh, topic requested by school committee member uh, Sandra Perrette. Turn it over to you, Mrs. Perrette. I guess we'll turn it over to you, and it involves um, Principal Theory out this year. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the we motion. need to take a, we need a second on the motion, and then I need to take a roll call, and unfortunately, we're going to have to take a, a roll call every time because Mr. Gerard is, is uh, virtual. Okay, so we're going to take a motion to take that out of order, and we'll ask for a roll call, please. Do, do you need a second? Need a second. So I'll, second. I'll, I'll make the motion to take it out of order to begin with. Thank you. And I'll second. Okay. I'll take the roll call on that. Do we have to do a roll call to come back in the session? We don't no. break. Any roll call? Yeah. We didn't go on the session. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? 
Yes. Mrs. Perrette? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Nine? Yes. Very good. 23-2-27. Mrs. Perrett? Uh, the walking school bus, it just sounded like a wonderful idea. And um, just after the, the presentation of this, just some other thoughts came to mind with regards to um, how, how is this going to, um, sure. What's your question? I, Mrs. Theriault. Yes, that's, I'm Mrs. Principal Theriault. Of, yes, I'm th the principal of Stefanik School. Yes. Um, just after your presentation, I think it was two weeks ago now. Correct. Uh, just a lot of questions just um, came to mind in terms of um, it's a wonderful idea, but with the liability, with the accidents that we've had on uh, Chicopee Street and Meadow Street. Just wondering about um, the, in, the enactment of, of this. And then with regards to the children, do the parents of the children need to give permission? And then if, the, if there's a, an adult who's picking the children up from school, is there another release that's signed by the parents of the children that they are allowing their child to um, Sure. To I can answer all of that for you. So first of all, I want you to start off where this all started from, because I think maybe you need a little background on this. So um, I have 90% of my students walk to school, OK? And a lot of these kids on, you know, walk by themselves or with older siblings, or they pair up with friends. Parents communicate with each other. Um, but unfortunately, we have a lot of parents that have little children. Um, who work night shifts or early morning shifts, and it's a struggle to get their kids to school on time or during severe, you know, with there's weather conditions and so on. So I actually attended before COVID. It was a professional development. It was done in Springfield with Holyoke and the urban schools about how to help attendance and tardies. And one of the things they brought up was the walking school bus. Now we're going back before, this is pre-pandemic. Um, so 2020, it was in my um, budget meeting that we were discussing the process at that point on how we were going to do it, but then COVID hit and it was put on hold. Um, then moving forward this spring, I got permission through um, central office and Mr. Francis and I walk, worked with Ann Koss and we communicated with the Department of Transportation who sent out somebody who does an analysis of the area around me of where the safest area would be to walk, what points would be the safest areas and so on. So they created a map and I don't know if you were given that map, but I had sent it to... Um, it's in the packet. Yeah, it's in the packet. So one of the things we sent out was a map, and in the map, there are two different routes on either side of the areas of that attend my school. And there are meeting points at each of those areas um, where the adults would be picking up the students um, and walking them to school with an adult, not by themselves. Um, and so where we are at a standstill right now, and I don't, I did not hand this packet in, but I can hand this to you before I leave and you can look at it, but um, the Department of Transportation, there is a whole step-by-step -step process that I have been going through and working with them. Um, and one of the things also, it, there is a training, Ms. Pe there is a training, but we have to hire before we can train. And there is documents, documents that parents have to sign that they are releasing their children, that they are attending this walking bus. So there is a whole process that we would follow, but it became, so we sent out a survey to all the parents after we had the map laid out um, and we had about 30 plus families that were interested in piloting it this fall. Um, but I unfortunately, we we're at a standstill. We couldn't hire two because I needed two for each because of the number of students and working with the Department of Transportation. The recommendation was two adults per each 
route. So we were unable to hire, and um, that's where we're at a standstill right now. But working with Ann Koss, she is uh, has saying that we are in the process of creating a new job description and rate for pay um, for potentially piloting again this spring. The people that would be hired would also be trained. They would have appropriate vests and signs they would carry with them. Um, and you had mentioned about going home. Um, we would not have this going home, it would only be coming to school. We don't have so much of an issue coming home because a lot of the older siblings come to greet their student, their, their siblings at the doors and walk them home um, because they get out before the elementary students do. Uh, but in the morning time, their older siblings are already in school. So that's where we get the, some of the issues there. So, so the adults would be employees of the Chicopee Public School System? Correct. Correct. And they will be quarried too. Excuse me. Quarried and fingerprint, ask, yes. Yeah, quarried and sorried as well. Yes. And Ann Koss has a whole training she does with the crossing guards. It would be a very similar training that would take place with these uh, walking school bus. So Holyoke um, also did this. Um, and was found much success with it too. Um, so I've been working with, um, her name is Lucy Friedman Bell and she's the outreach coordinator for Massachusetts Safe Routes to School. Um, and she has, was one of the, she came out several times, we walked it, we drove it, we looked at crosswalks, where the crosswalks were, where they were not. Um, so she, we, we'd love to pilot this spring to see what it would look like and then, you know, obviously improve it as if we found that there was need for improvement. Okay, thank you. And I, I believe that the city council was talking about, um, which may take time to put some other safety measures in place in those um, high traffic areas in the Chicopee Street and Meadow Street. And that would be wonderful. That was discussed at a Yes, meeting. I know that there are some areas that we would want more crosswalks. Um, but unfortunately, it, it's a huge, it would be a huge process. We'd have to go through the city because we can't just make crosswalks. It has to be approved. And I, I don't know all the rules, but when working with the Department of Transportation and her reaching out to the city of Chicopee and stuff, um, that there would be some, some roadblocks there. But the route they created, we didn't need any because we had them at areas okay. where there were crosswalks. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the additional information. It was just after you left on that... Uh that Wednesday, all these questions popped up. No, I'm really yeah. excited about it. I would love to see it turn into the, the, turn into the squawking school bus. Um, I think it would be something that would be really neat that maybe um, potentially other schools like Bo who has, I'm sure they have a lot of students that walk to their school too. Um, you know, that would be an improvement. Like I said, it's, it's not that the families want to get their kids there. Unfortunately, we have parents that work late shifts mm -hmm. at night, early, early morning, or, or, you know, single moms that have, you know, infant babies and they got to wrap them up and bring them out in the cold. So it's just, I think parents would feel safer knowing that there were adults on the route to school, helping, guiding, and, and supporting those students and making sure that they're all being safe. Just one more question. Let me see if I understood correctly that the the parent would be bringing the child to the adult at... No, no. They, they would be meeting spots. So the kids wouldn't have to walk the whole way to school by themselves. So if you look at the map, if they lived on, for example, I don't have a map in front of me right now. Hold on. Do you have the map in front of you? Oh, I got it right here. That was upside down. All right, so like for example, McKinstry Street and Chicopee Street, there's actually two points on that street. So you could either go to one end of the street or the other end of the street. So if you ever driven down that street, it's a real great meeting point. So you would have, that would be one point and that would be one point where it would be an adult at a certain time that would be getting to that point that they would pick up those students. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh Hello, everyone, and thank you, Principal Theriot. I, I was able to catch part of that. I wish they had implemented that back in 1976. My parents would have been really happy. Uh, <laughs> as, a, as a student walking to General John Jay Stefanik School, so that would have been wonderful. I'm actually gonna leave. Uh, I'll leave it in the back with Mr. Francis. If you wanna take, um, this is what was handed to me for the Department of Transportation, the process and the steps we could take and ideas for forms to create. I didn't make one for everyone, but if you want another one, you can always call the school and I'll give it to you. Is thank that, you. Are, you, are you all set? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So first, let me apologize to the viewing audience. I had another engagement this evening, but I wanted to make sure I got back. Uh, I know there's some important school committee business that we need to address tonight. So approval of minutes 23-2-8. Move that the minutes of the special meeting of the school committee held on January 23rd, 2023 be approved. Susan, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Any discussion? S Sandra. Just, um, should there be a, um, a mention of the fact that at this meeting there was a request regarding the um, conflict of interest question with uh, Mr. Lamoth and the participating in, in the um, interview? I know it's referenced at the um, 124 meeting, but there's nothing that was said because there was a discussion about that at the 123 meeting that I raised the question about the conflict of interest because of Mr. Lamont's son being a principal. I don't have an answer for you. I think you're looking at me for an answer. I don't know. <coughs> Council, do you have a, an answer? I did not draft these minutes. Um, I don't have a copy of the minutes, so I can't answer but that question. I, I think we have a motion on the floor to approve, so if you're not in favor of approval, I think you could vote no. Can I make one more statement? Sure. Just there, there's You're inconsistencies next. with how the um, meeting minutes are recorded. On one of the um, minutes, it says uh, the last one was that the um, candidate left at such and such a time, but it, the exit of the candidates for uh, January 23rd and January 24th are not stated. So it seems like there should be some consistency in how we documented those three meetings? So like I said, it's within our purview to either approve or not approve these minutes. And I think that we could do that collectively as a board. So your point of information is duly recognized by me as chair. Are you all set? I am, thank you. Mr. Lamoth, you have a I would have no problem with amending the minutes to include the statement that was made by Ms. Perrette. I mean, I, I did you call just, state Please ethics. talk into the microphone. I would have no issue with her including that in a statement because she did bring it up. And I did call the state ethics the next day and recused myself from that point forward. Okay, uh, can we uh, amend the minutes on the floor here or is this something that we should vote on approving or not approving, council? Well, I, I think the, the recording secretary should review her notes and amend and we can um, okay. bring them back for approval at the next meeting. So we could, uh, if it would be favorable to make a motion to table until the next sure. meeting? Make a motion to table it. Any discussion on the table? I'd like to include all of them, all four, so that she can review them and make sure they're all consistent. So we have one, two, three, four, special meeting. Um, we're, we're going to take them one by one, Don. We we'll okay, take individual no votes, votes on them. So we have a motion right now to table 23-2-8. That's been second. We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Dowd? Yes. Mrs. Perrette? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23-2-9. Move that the minutes of the special meeting of the school committee held on January 24, 2023 be approved. John, can I have a motion? Motion to table. I have a motion to table. That ends discussion. We'll take a roll call on the table. Was there a discussion? I'm sorry. I just wanted to point to out. The table on the floor, so I believe that ends discussion. No, there can be discussion on the motion to table, but um, okay. what's the discussion on? There was no roll call documented here. There was a call to order, a moment of silence, but there was no roll call. Okay, I'm, okay. And I, I went to listen back at the meetings, but They've been edited, so all we have is the interview, so I don't know if there's the unedited copy of the meetings available. So we have a motion to table. Sandra, you have the floor, go ahead. Discussion. I know that we have um, that 
Um, Mr. Lamoth was present remotely and did not participate. But again, the documentation of his presence is inconsistent at the, in the meeting minutes. At one, it says that he's uh, present remotely, not participating. So at the 124 meeting, it says that he's absent. Should it not be consistent? He's present, he's remotely, not, he's present remotely and not participating when his name is listed as a vote. Is it, it, I, I didn't create the minutes, so I, I don't have I, answers for you. I'm just stating the inconsistencies. Stating the inconsistencies, thank you. Any other discussion of roll call for a table? Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrette? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23 dash 2 dash 10. Move that the minutes of the special meeting of the school committee held on January 25th, 2023 be approved. Grace, could I get a motion? Motion to uh, table. So, motion to table. Any discussion? Take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? The motion carries 23 2 11. Move that the minutes of the special meeting of the school committee held on January 31st, 2023 be approved. Sam Shumsky, can I get a motion? Motion to table. We have a motion to table. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? <coughs> yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? A motion carries. 23-2-12. Will the minutes of the regular school committee held on February 1st, 2023 be approved? Check. Can I get a motion? Motion to... Uh, Approve. We have motion to approve. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. <coughs> Just need a second. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Lamont. Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Peratt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23-2-13. Move at the minutes of the special meeting of the school committee held on February 6, 2023 be approved. Sandra, can I get a motion? Motion to table. We have a motion to table. Any discussion? Sandra, you have the floor. Uh, regarding this meeting, I don't believe uh, that Mr. Lamoth was present for the roll call. I listened, this meeting did have the roll call on the, um, on the tape, and uh, there, his name was called, but there was no yay or nay. That's because I couldn't get in on Zoom and I came in late to the meeting, so. Okay. So, so I guess the minutes need to be to reflect that. Okay. So we have a motion. I, I know that you were sitting in the audience at some point, but there was never any recognition that you were at the, at the meeting. We have a motion to table. Any other discussion? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? <coughs> yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor. <coughs> Motion carries. Reports 23-2-14.
report on personnel action. I have three retirements I'd like to uh, mention. First, it's uh, Patricia Coleman, senior, ter uh, senior clerk type is telecom or IT department. She could be comp 28 years, five months. And Lucia Kazakis, health teacher, she could be high school, 28 years. And Donald uh, Joseph Morissette, interim director of student support services, 11 years. And I'd like to read a little bit about all three of them. Uh, Lucia Kazakis, she joined Chicopee in 1995 at Fairview Veterans Memorial Middle School as the home of uh, as the home economics teacher. Lucia joined the Chicopee High School staff in 2008 as the family and consumer science teacher. She's been a huge advocate for the students of Chicopee High School. Ms. Kazakis has been a class of I helped with Pride Week and has been involved in many community projects. Uh, Ms. Patricia Coleman. Patty Coleman began her, began her career 28 years working in a C, uh, CTE computer lab before transitioning to telecom. She will be missed by everyone being so pleasant, helpful, a friend, and will be greatly missed. Patty plans to enjoy her retirement by the beach. Her family is proud of her and wishes her all the best. And Donald Joseph Morset. Mr. Morset started his career in the Chicopee Public Schools in the fall of 2002 as the Chicopee Comprehensive SRO, as a veteran police officer in the Chicopee Police Department. Department Officer Morset worked to build relationships with staff and students while working to maintain the safety and security of several other Chickabee schools. Officer Morset quickly became a consistent and dependable part of the comp community, gaining hugs from graduating seniors as well as a yearbook dedication. After 10 years as an SRO, Mr. Morset was hired as Chickabee Comprehensive newest vice principal, effective for the 2012-2013 school year as vice principal. Uh, Mr. Morissett has maintained his focus on safety and security of Kant while he continued his efforts of helping students make good decisions and preparing them for successful post-secondary life. After 10 years as vice principal, Mr. Morissett has been working in this his final year as interim director of student support services for the Chicopee Public Schools while working the last 20 years to help Comp Strong. We would like to wish uh, Mr. Morissette a happy and travel-filled retirement as he begins his new adventure at the end of June. I want to wish all these retirees um, a successful retirement and thank them all for what they've done for the Chickie Public School students and their families, and thank you for everything that you have um, given to the Chickie Public Schools. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you, uh, Acting Superintendent. I echo those sentiments as well. Any other discussion? or? All right, we'll move on to 23-2-15. Report on the policy in Human Resources Subcommittee. I don't believe we, Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, policy and Human Resources Subcommittee met on, oh God, what was it? Uh, February 8th of this year. We had a number of items that we discussed in committee, uh, several of which you'll see on the agenda for later. Um, we had, school committee organizational meeting and subcommittees uh, policy documents B7 and B9. We just had to re-amend those to reflect change in the law uh, that we changed earlier in this term that was not uh, consistent with mass general law. So we have to have an organizational meeting every year and elect a vice chair every year. Um, so that was not consistent. We had to change that. And then we just kept uh, language for subcommittee chairs and rep to city government to be two-year terms just so we don't have to do it every year we had uh, field trips and uh, student travel policy basically just clarifying what needed school committee approval and what needed superintendent approval uh, academic achievement uh, was not much change there A transfer funds but document d3 we updated that to amend it to say any transfer between accounts needs school committee approval. Um, but if John Marecki wants to speak, if he's here, we, or if the superintendent wants to speak a little bit on it, we are gonna be sort of restructuring the budget as well and, and how that works so that, um, you know, we get a shorter budget every year um, and, and things work the same basically as they have been. And then we had uh, interrogation searches and arrests, document J28. Um, not a whole lot of change there that I remember. Just a couple of wording things. Um, mostly just the title of the of the document we changed. And then, Mr. Morton, I'm going to hand student conduct and discipline over to you. I think you can explain that a heck of a lot better than I can. Uh, but it was a change to the uh, state's discipline laws that we have to uh, basically go along with now. 
So uh, in the conversation in that subcommittee meeting, there was a change on November 8th, 2022 um, in the discipline law, and which was kind of hidden in a mental health uh, bill. Uh, even the Department of Education wasn't aware that the actual law had changed. Well, I think they were aware, but they hadn't put any type of guidance out. So we got information probably on, I want to say, maybe Halloween, and then we had to implement the new procedures in the discipline law. So basically, there's a three-step order before you can even actually suspend if you're using 37H and three quarters. If you're using 37H or 37H and a half, and 37H and a half is felony charges, 37H is drugs, weapons, or assault the staff or serious bodily injury, then you wouldn't have to follow these procedures. But anything else under 37H and three quarters, you would have to go through the process of alternatives to suspension. If then if those alternatives to suspension, you're going through the process, you have to figure out whether or not they are counterproductive or unsuitable. If the alternative suspension are counterproductive or unsuitable, then you can go to the third prong where the student presents a, a harm to somebody else in the building, serious bodily injury or some other type of harm. But you have to go through that progressive process and show that you've tried alternative suspension. And if you tried them, then the alternatives are counterproductive or unsuitable, then you can get to the third prong or actually suspending students. So that was the biggest thing to let people know that, that the, our policy didn't change per se, but the law changed. So we're operating in different parameters as it comes to discipline. We still can be creative and innovative. And um, when it comes to um, doling out consequences, when it comes to um, violations of the student conduct and discipline policy. Uh, we've had multiple trainings with our VPs and principals. We're working on uh, different type of resources for alternative suspension. Um, we're also trying to get creative when it comes to different type of behaviors that kids are, are now exhibiting um, as we speak to make sure that they understand that their actions. But we're also trying to make sure that our discipline consequences are always restorative, reflective, and instructional. That is the big thing we're trying to do. So they need to restore the environment that they uh, actually offended, be reflective on the decision they made to try to give them the resources and the skills necessary to make sure they can make better decisions and then instructional, just instructing different things that they can do or different coping mechanisms. So those are things we're trying to implement and we've also been working with the CEA to talk about different things that we can do within the classroom to make sure that it's a safe environment for staff members and students. <coughs> Thank you, Alvin. Thank you, Acting Superintendent. Sure, Susan, you have the floor. Along those lines, can our students be arrested? Yes, I mean, if they commit a criminal offense within school, they can still be arrested. Okay, because I see that here on our policy. Are we out of order here? We're up here, we're down here. So this is on first reading tonight, all these policies, and I'm not, I know we're not allowed to talk about it then, which is 23-2-21. But we're talking about the minutes that took place at the school committee meeting, mm -hmm. their policy, so I'm allowed to talk about this right now, right? Yeah, it's on the floor right now, as a report, yes. Right, because I'd also like to talk about metal detectors, please. That's okay, right, Rebecca Bouchard, our attorney? Thank you. Um, we got a, a very comprehensive email about a month ago from Sharon L. I'm not going to use her last um, name because I wasn't sure if she gave me permission to do so. And it was all about metal detectors. So I'm just going to ask uh, Superintendent Morton to go over again what he went over with me before the meeting started about the installation of metal detectors in our two high schools and our two middle schools, please. If you can just update the public. So with the policy change that we're looking to go for, this will probably be the second reading in the first meeting. March, we're looking to roll out our metal detectors. They will be put out, they will be utilized after the policy is um, voted on and approved. So we're looking in March to actually utilize them um, in the first part of March um, to make sure that they are utilized in, in the way we're looking to utilize them on a, on a regular basis. And I've been told that our, our school system is gonna be treating this very professionally. We're gonna be training our staff we're going to be setting them up when they're on vacation. Correct. So what we're looking to do is have a I have a meeting with Chief Major and um, Captain Henry to talk about um, one an after action report of some things that transpired recently. But also we're going to talk about how to train the staff because it will be staff members that will have to monitor the metal detectors and do the metal scanners or the wands, the hand wands, handheld wands when kids actually go through the metal detectors. 
So officially, after the, at, when we make this motion earlier, um, later in the evening, we'll have approved this first reading of the policy. And then we need the second reading, which will be in March, but we'll already have them set up. And then once those uh, policies approve, we will look to implement them once the policy is approved by school committee. Thank you, Superintendent Morton. You and I have been in contact with each other through various emails at the Correct. last month or so. And I appreciate you um, explaining this all to me right now and making sure I'm clear with it so I can get the news back to Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Well, I will share that I, I did go to Chicopee High today, and I did talk with some of our seniors, and um, it's surreal that something like this happens, and um, I'm thankful that it was a hoax threat yesterday morning. I just wanted to see some of the reaction that the students were feeling, and what I heard from many is uh, obviously they were scared, their parents were scared, and how professional the situation was handled by Principal Cruiser, the faculty, support staff, um, the students themselves, and, and most importantly, the Chicopee Police Department, the fire department, and our first responders. Um, the intent was to keep people informed, to try to make sure that people were safe and secure, and um, I, I know that they're going to do a debrief on the event, and I'm thankful, and I'll share this with the public, that it ended up being a drill and a training exercise instead of a, a real threat to the safety of the students in our school. Um, a lot of students shared with me how they're disappointed and, and frankly disgusted that one person can impact so many, meaning all the students, parents, their loved ones, the families, frankly the region, and if not the entire country, because these hoax threats have to stop. Um, I have all the faith in the world in, a, in our police department, our law enforcement, and, and, and those above them who are investigating um, just these heinous acts that are wreaking havoc, especially when they hit home right here in the city of Chicopee. I just wanted to share those thoughts with, with everyone. And, and again, first and foremost, thank the Chicopee PD and the parents, the students, uh, the principal support staff for all working together and and uh, first and foremost, making sure everyone was safe and out of harm's way, and, and making sure that um, the, the situation was handled professionally and appropriately. So it's unfortunate to have to have this discussion, uh, but it's reality today. Thank you. Any other discussion? Move on to new business 23 2 16. Was there a roll call on report to policy? Do I need a roll call on the report to policy? We don't have a motion, it was just a right. report. Thank you. Move that the transfer of funds totaling $12,000 be approved. Tim, could I get a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth. Abstain. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mrs. Lopes. Yes. Mr. Zatella. Yes. Mayor View. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Dowd. Yes. Mrs. Perrett. Yes. Mrs. Schofield. Yes. Mr. Shumsky. Yes. 10 yes, one abstain. Motion carries. 23-2-17. Move that the bills warn S0203233 totaling $1,019,722.46 be approved. Jay, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shumsky, could you please read the warrants into the record? Yes. Um, for so I'm going to read the totals of the warrant, both warrants, and we're going to act upon these individually. So the first item on the warrant is athletics. It was $31,107. Food services, $137,351,000. General expenses, $91,446.98. Grants, $100,448. Maintenance, $78,954. Special Education, $188,646. Student Activities, 
$3,748. Transportation, $872,026. Telecommunications, $194. For a total of $1,503,922. So like uh, Sam Chomsky said, we'll be voting on the first warrant. That's $1,019,722.46. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Dow? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23-2-18. Move that the bills warrant S021023 totaling $484,199.26 be approved. Ron, can I get a motion? Make a motion to approve. Any discussion on the second warrant? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23-2-19. Move that the memorandum of agreement between the Chickabee School Committee and the Chickabee Education Association Union A be approved and the chairperson be authorized to sign. Mr. Gerard or Doug, can we get a motion? Yeah, motion to approve there. Motion to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamont. Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Dow? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23-2-20. Move that the AP pre-calculus be approved as a new course. Susan? Motion to approve. Any discussion? <laughs> would Susan? not be a class that I would have taken. Oh, oh my gosh. You must have to be really smart to take this class. I'm excited about this class. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Any uh, other discussion about the AP pre-calculus being approved? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrette? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23-2-21. Move that the first reading of the following policies be approved as recommended by the Policy and Human Resources Subcommittee. A, School Committee Organizational Meeting, B7. B, School Committees of the Subcommittees of the School Committee, B9. C, Transfer of Funds, D3. D, Field Trips, I-27. E, Student Progress Reports to Parents and Guardians, I-28. F, Searches, Interrogations and Arrests, J-28 and G, student late night or overnight travel, J34. Don, can I get a motion? Motion for the first reading. Motion for the first reading. No discussion, because it's a first reading. We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23-2-22. Move at the request for three student athletes to attend a wrestling tournament in Methuen, Mass, February 17, 2023 through February 18, 2023 be approved. Grace, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Any discussion? Sandra. Just wish the best to our students as they compete at the end of this week. Thank you. Any other discussion? Comments? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamont? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. And Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23-2-23.
Open meeting law complaint. So uh, can I get a motion from Sam? And to approve? Or so, yes, yeah, so we'll get a motion to approve, and the motion should be to uh, delegate. Uh, can I get a motion to delegate this response to our council? Motion to delegate this response to our council. Thank you. On that motion, just for the public's information, we received an open meeting law complaint. I do have it here. I believe it was from, thank you. The date of the alleged violation was 1-31-23. Um, instructions for the public body that receives these complaints, we have to first disseminate that, which I'm doing here tonight by providing that in your packet to the body, which is the school committee. Second is the body uh, will then review the complaint, and we need to do that within 48, uh, 14 business days, so we're reviewing that right now in the meeting. So I know that you all have a copy of it. Any discussion, please uh, feel free. I will share that the complaint came from Lisa Bievenu, that it was, uh, again, on our meeting from 131-23, I believe, and the motion, uh, uh, the complaint, if I could read in, if it would be, I'll read it into the record on 131-23. The school committee had a special meeting for the deliberation and selection of a new superintendent of schools. The roll call was taken at the beginning of the meeting. There were 10 members present in person, Mayor View, Mayor, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Barslow, Mr. Doubt, Mrs. Perrett, Mrs. Schofield, Mr. Shumsky, Mr. Gerard, Mrs. Satella Lopes, and Mr. Satella. Mr. Lamoth was on Zoom and stated that he was here but not participating when his name was called at the rule. Mr. Bernard was on Zoom and indicated he was present when his name was called. The recording secretary announced the recall call. The roll, roll, roll call is 11 present and one absent. This is an incorrect announcement. Mr. Lamoth made a point of stating that he was at the meeting but not participating. I believe it was intentional to mark Mr. Lamoth as absent since the previous week it was announced that Mr. Lamoth had a conflict of interest regarding the selection of a new superintendent and was advised by the Ethics Commission not to participate in the process moving forward. The issue of conflict was initially raised on 123-23 at the start of the special meeting for the candidate interviews. Mr. Lamoth made a point of responding to the roll call at this 131-23 meeting that he was here and qualified it with not participating. The roll call should indicate that he was present and not actually absent. Also, Mayor View did not indicate at the beginning of the meeting that members of the committee that were on Zoom. So the, the, uh, the action that we're taking as a public body, you can see again, we all have a copy. Uh, the public body needs training regarding the requirements of the open meeting law. We have, I've actually already attended that training the training is going to be available. I don't recall the date, Becky, do you have uh, Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I believe it's right here in the auditorium at 10, 10 a.m.? Uh, let me check my calendar, Mayor. And those who can't make the training next week uh, will be trying to offer another training in the evening. Um, I hope that this training will improve compliance with the open meeting laws. However, it is concerning that a member who was present uh, though not participating due to a conflict of interest, was actually recorded as absent. This is not a true representation of the members in attendance at the meeting. So we have a motion. We will uh, have our attorney, uh, again, we're delegating a response uh, through council and any other discussion on the open meeting law complaint. Seeing none, we'll, again, the motion is to uh, delegate response uh, to our council, Becky Bouchard. And we'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries 23 2 24. School committee meeting notification and agenda preparation policy B 13. Topic requested by school community member uh, Timothy Wagner. Tim Wagner, you have the floor. Thank you. I'll make a motion that this be referred to the policy subcommittee for discussion. So the motion is to refer to the policy subcommittee for discussion. Any other discussion on sending it to committee? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? 
Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. <coughs> yes. Ms. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Peratt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23 2 25. Training on how to conduct a public meeting. Topic requested by school community member Sandra Peratt. Sandra Peratt, you have the floor. I know that uh, we. Um, have the training for the open meeting law, but I thought that also we should have training on how to conduct a public meeting just based on the, the conduct and that was displayed during the, the interview process and during uh, discussion when um, one of our committee members was told that he would not be called on again um, and he was simply stating uh, his opinion. So I just I think that we need to review on, on how to conduct a public meeting because sometimes we're having roll calls, sometimes we're not. We adjourned, for example, today for a, a one minute recess, but there was no roll call. So I just think that we need to be reminded on how to conduct a meeting. I couldn't agree more. And just for the record, that did not happen. So I don't recall never uh, telling someone that they would not be called on again. So for the record, that didn't happen. Mr. Wagner. As the member involved in question who was to remain nameless just a few minutes ago, I, I have to agree. It was just stated that I no longer had the floor, not that I would not be called on. Okay. I Thank apologize. You. I misheard that. Thank you. Any other discussion? And, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think training is paramount to our success as a committee and a board and many other boards. So thank you, Sandra, for bringing this forward. Thank you. Any other discussion? Sure, Jay. I would just ask if possible if we can make that training at a time that maybe isn't during the day so for those of us who might have a job or work at a school or something like that would be available to attend that training if we could set it up at night time possibly sure thing we're trying to accommodate it as best we can by working with the state so thank you for that comment duly noted any other discussion thank you oh I don't believe, so we have a motion to, uh, no. actually it's just an informative, we're going to have a training, so I can assure you we'll do that. Thank you. I don't think we need to take a, a vote on the training. Council. Well, is someone making a motion? If someone's making a no motion, then we need to take a vote. No one has made a motion yet, so. If not, then it's a discussion topic. Discussion topic, no motions. Uh, any further discussion? All right, thank you. We'll move on to 23-2.26. Anna E. Berry School, new construction or renovations, topic requested by school community member Sandra Perrett. Sandra, you have the floor. The reason that I asked that this be on our agenda was because when we had the presentation of Anna Berry School, there was a mention that the school may be renovated as opposed to new construction, and that was the first time that I heard that being mentioned, I thought that we were talking about constructing a new Anna Berry School. So just clarification, are we constructing a new school or are we renovating the old school? It didn't seem like in the tour of the, the Anna Berry School that we had, I don't remember the month, it might have been late fall, that it was, the, the talk was new construction. So we'll be entering into, a, I don't know if acting superintendent wants to answer or I can, it's my understanding through the SBA that to uh, first we're accepted into the program, then we're going to actually start taking action in April and it's an exploratory phase, uh, 270 days, I believe. And all the, again, through that exploratory, we look at all options. So renovation is something that has to be considered. Consolidation of potentially maybe two schools. Um, all different options will be looked at, explored, and, and hopefully vetted thoroughly, and the right decision would be made. So I believe that uh, uh, renovating the existing facility has to be included in that exploratory. It, I do believe we're heading towards new construction, but we, I had to say that um, as one of the options. Thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. Any other discussion about Anna Berry? It's pretty exciting. Looking forward for that process. 23-227. Oh, we already did that one. Thank you. 
Principal Theorio, thank you for that. 23-228. Safety policy practices for Chicopee Academy. Topic requested by school team member Sandra Perret. Sandra Perret, you have the floor. Yeah, that, that was um, referred for us this evening because of the fact that um, it seems that the students at Chicopee Academy have the metal detectors in place already. It seems that the, the safety practices and policies are different. Um, and that's why I refer to just for an, an explanation. And I, I don't know if we have a it's different safety policy for the academy. No, it's just a part of the enrollment procedures. That's the, you know, we put the most at-risk students in one particular school. And it's, you know, prior to the academy being the academy shaping school, it's been a part of the enrollment procedures for those kids to actually, before we even had yonder packs or everything else, that part of the policy was phones were taken away and actually the metal detectors were being put in place for safety reasons. Okay, just seems that, in my humble opinion, all the students should be treated the same, but... I understand that, um, but I, I think the fact that parents are aware in the intake, they're told up front what the process they go through, so they're aware of what they're going to be, um, I won't say subject, subjected to, but actually the process of enrollment and interest into Chicopee Academy. And the parents sign off on that? The parents are told that. No, there's no sign off because obviously our, our job is to provide education, so we're providing education at one of our schools. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Sure, Susan. But there are at most risk students. You made that clear, right, Mr. Superintendent Martin? It's somewhere. So I think there's a misconception out there about Chicopee Academy. The Academy houses a lot of different students, but I say for reasons at risk could be anything from attendance to behavior. It could be anything from um, mental health. Um, you know, it could be credit deficiency. So when I say at risk, at risk, it encompasses a lot of different things. So I don't want anybody to think that it's just all the behavioral kids are in one school, but yes, it's our most at risk school. And within the next couple of weeks, they're going to be metal detectors will be installed at our other two high schools and our two middle schools. Correct. That's going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra? So then everyone will be treated the same, it seems then, with the metal detectors being in place at all this, at these four schools. Correct. You still don't have the elementary school kids, but yeah. yeah. For and the most part. And a, a point of information, they don't have yonder bags, I believe, at the academy. Excuse me? They do not have yonder bags at our Chicopee Academy. Nor do the middle schools. Nor the middle schools at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, all, anyone else for, again, uh, safety policy practices with Chicopee Academy? Any other discussion? 23-229. Career and Techno Education Program Admissions and Waiting List. Topic requested by school key member Sandra Perrette. And we did receive some information uh, from Interim Superintendent Mr. Morton from Mr. Ingram, the Director of Career Tech, and I'm thinking that perhaps we should refer this to our policy subcommittee to review, review the admission practice and review the waiting list as well as um, the information that Mr. Ingram gave to us today. So we have a motion to send to the policy subcommittee. Any discussion? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Dowd? Yes. Mrs. Perrett? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. 23-2-30. School bus cameras, topic requested by school team member Donald Lamoth. Don, you have the floor. Yes, I, I have brought this up in the past and I saw that in Worcester they, there's a law, uh, state legislator that's pushing forward to try to make a law change that we can give tickets to those passing a bus using the camera. And what they, he was looking for was to get some resolutions from school committees to basically jump on board so we had some ammunition. So I would like to make a, a motion tonight that the school committee be in favor of ticketing people passing buses with flashing lights on a, mm -hmm. on a camera and s set it to our local lawmakers. I 
So, I'm sorry, did you make a motion? Or? Yes, I did. I'll second. Could you uh, repeat the motion, please? That we, we send a letter to our, our local lawmakers telling them that we're in favor of them giving tickets to people passing school buses with the red lights on. Um, if they get enough support, they can change the law so that when we have people passing our buses and they're on camera, they can be ticketed. And we can send that letter and uh, we can draft it. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert on it, but I, I do believe that uh, a camera in the state of Massachusetts doesn't warrant enough for a ticket. They're trying to change the law. They're looking trying for Trying to support. change that law. Yes. Okay. So we can send a letter of support. Of support. Okay. Any other discussion? Sure. Tim Wagner. Thank you. Not, not that I'm uh, against this, but what would be the specific bill number here? I'd like to see some language before I vote on anything. That's, you know, just my concern. But. So Tim said he would like to see the actual bill at, I don't if, have if there is a bill in the House or Senate at the state level that would support uh, this request that we'd be supporting with a letter. I do not have the letter. So um, would it be a friendly motion to table so that we could get that information? I would like for? to push this on tonight so that they can have the support to look at it. I mean, it's going to have to go for a vote with the state legislator. I mean, if he wants to vote no, vote no. So your motion stands. And further discussion, go ahead, Tim. Respectfully, being closer related to somebody who just very recently left the State House, I can tell you with, with some level of confidence that it's not gonna be taken up within the legislature for months. They just started their term. They don't even have committee assignments yet. Those don't come out normally until late March. I, I think it's worth tabling it just until the next meeting, just until we see some language. It's not gonna move for months. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Yes, the motion is to send a letter to our delegation, okay. and now a motion to table. So I, I've not made any motion. Huh? I've not made any motion to oh, table. Oh, I apologize. I thought you no. said you made a recommendation. Oh, that's or just my opinion. Okay. Uh, I, I apologize. I thought you said you were making a motion to no, table. No, no, no. Any other discussion? So the motion right now is to send a letter of support. All set. Roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? No. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Peratt? No. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. M Mr. Shumsky? Yes. Nine yes and two no. Motion carries. New business. To my left, anyone? Oh. Are you all set? Oh, I am oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Well, Mr. Shumsky. Uh, yes, I just want to see if we can look at um, the opioid remediation funds from the settlement agreements and if we can use them to fund social emotional adjustment counselors at schools or social emotional learning. Sure, we did receive settlement funds and we can uh, see if that's a possibility. I know a task force has been created, Sam, and they were working on uh, working either at the front end on prevention, so mm -hmm. I think that fits the mold for prevention, yep. and I'm not sure where we're at exactly today, and also at the far end, which is treatment. So thank you for that motion. Uh, for can that we, uh, can I ask that, that um, cause one of the things in that meeting, we were looking for substance abuse prevention counselors. We don't need the social emotional piece. We need the substance abuse counseling. That's what I meant, sorry about so that. For clarity, you, you're looking yes, for sorry about that. substance abuse counseling. Yes, sorry. Okay, I think that's I just in put the works. It, I just grouped it all together. Yeah, that was one of the things that came up in our meeting. Yes, that was definitely something that's in the works. So we can follow up and get you more information. Okay, thank you. Okay, for everyone. Any other new business to my left? To the right? New business? Mr. Gerard? Mayor. Yeah, if we could just maybe put on the agenda for next meeting, uh, you know, the yonder pouches and, and maybe, you know, just to make it equal and fair for all, uh, you know, the students that we have the same policies in place for, uh, <clears throat> you know, each school. 
Um, it, and it might be a good topic now uh, to discuss after uh, the latest threat. Uh, there's been some discussion back and forth about cell phones and, and the under policy again. So maybe we need to, to readjust that whole policy uh, or, or just have a, a little talk or deliberation about it um, in the next meeting um, to make sure we are headed in the right direction. But, uh, you know, I do think what, what's good for one school should be good for all schools and uh, everybody should be treated equally. I, want to answer that. I, be I believe the policy at the uh, Chicopee Academy is no phones. So theirs is a little stricter <laughs> than the yonder pouch. They have no phone access during the day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. And I, but I think essentially it's the same. I mean, um, you can't use your phones during the school day for Chicopee High, Chicopee Comp. Um, or your smart watches or anything like that. Um, with the yonder packs and Chicopee Academy, with the phones are locked up, kids are not able to, they turn them in and arrival and they get them back during dismissal. Um, and Mr. Wagner has already approached me about um, having a conversation with both middle school principals about whether yonder packs are, are needed in our middle schools. Because currently the policy in the middle schools is right now that the cell phones are supposed to be in their lockers which a lot of kids do abide by, but we do have some people that have some infractions when it comes to the cell phones. So, uh, school, Doug, yeah, would you I, I, to put I would think that discussion. You know, teaching these, I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, go ahead. If you want to go ahead, but. Discussion topic uh, on yonder pouches on the next agenda? Yeah, I just think that even we need to look at it as our, you know, in our middle schools as well, like Mr. Wagner says, uh, you know, we should be trying to teach the kids uh, at an early age right from wrong and uh, to, to just, you know, throw something at them. And when they reach the high school level, I don't think is uh, the right way to, to discipline. So I, I would agree with my colleague, uh, Mr. Wagner, on this one. Correct. Second year, she could be high, though. So just a point of information, they are still in pilot phase, so it isn't a bad idea to get an idea on this, how they're working out. So I, I think that's a great motion. I mean, I'm sorry, Thank you, great new business topic. All set, Doug? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mayor. I feel like you're way up there in the balcony. I don't know. I'm looking up there at you because you're up there. Yeah, I'm not feeling well, Mayor, so I, I didn't want to miss the meeting, but I certainly don't want to get my colleagues sick as well either. I hope you feel better. Tim, Thank you. Tim Wagner, you have the floor. It's just one comment on this. I, I did approach the uh, Student Advisory Council about conducting a survey at both the high schools as to what the feelings are on the pal at the on the yonder pouches so far, so whenever they get that data, they should uh, they should be bringing that to us. But if we could just invite the SAC president just in the next meeting, just to give an update in, in lieu of the survey. I'm sorry, I missed the last part. Invite the invite the invite the SAC president in lieu of a, a survey. Can I add a just a commentary? So one of those things that the positive. I can't speak for the students, but I can speak for emergency response. That when we had the situation at Chickabee High School. With the phones being in the yonder packs, it did help with the communications and things going through and not being held up. So in emergency situations, those are something that really helps out. Point of information? It's not on the agenda. We shouldn't be discussing it. Yeah, it's going to be on the next agenda. Right. So we'll, we'll stop there. Any other new business? Thank you. Uh, Susan, executive session. Move that the school committee go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with the incoming superintendent of schools and not to reconvene in open session. So I will say that it could be detrimental to our negotiations if we don't do it in executive session. So therefore, I request that we head into executive session so that we can uh, figure out our terms and how we want to proceed with negotiations. Any discussion on the executive session? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Peratt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Shumsky? Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening.